In Kiev, General Sukomlinov is remembered for his ability to maintain order despite the threat of terrorism. He established cooperation with the police and gendarmerie, rather than relying solely on the loyal Cossacks. Under his leadership, attempts to organize a workers' uprising and Jewish pogroms were suppressed. In October 1905, Sukomlinov was appointed Governor General of Kiev, Podolsk, and Volinsky. He successfully dealt with the Sapper revolt and made progress in his personal affairs, seeking a divorce. Eventually, he moved to St. Petersburg to become chief of the general staff. Sukomlinov became the Minister of War of the Russian Empire in 1909, a position that marked the height of his career. Despite starting in the general staff and taking a pay cut, Sukomlinov's appointment was supported by Grand Duke Nikolai Nikolaevich. He was known for his enthusiasm for modernizing the army, even though he clashed with Dragomirov. Some credit him with the creation of automobile units and the establishment of an air force in the Russian army before the outbreak of World War I. Sukomlinov was not resistant to new trends and was described as going with the flow. General Yupankin recalled an incident from Sukomlinov's earlier command, where he showed great concern during a ceremonial march. During Sukomlinov's time as Minister of War, machine gun teams were formed in regiments and air detachments were formed in corps. However, these transformations were actually under the jurisdiction of the Council of State Defense, chaired by Grand Duke Nikolai Nikolaevich. Sukomlinov's role was more like a government official who saved state funds, as he reported to the emperor about increasing the number of army corps by using funds from fortresses. However, eliminating fortresses like Novogorgiev's and Osovets turned out to be a mistake, as they could have provided real support for the front and served as bases for supplying field troops. Sukomlinov had strained relations with the Minister of Finance, who successfully reduced military spending. Despite Sukomlinov's requests for additional military expenditures, Nicholas II slowed down the process. The emperor, focused on family affairs and the autocratic idea, gave Sukomlinov a lot of leeway. Sukomlinov believed he was doing everything possible for victory in the next war, even going as far as almost provoking a clash with Austria-Hungary during the Balkan Wars. Sukomlinov, although not a commander, was responsible for preparing Russia for war and did little to prevent numerous defeats. He centralized authority in the military department, disregarding other departments and preventing private businesses from participating in defense orders. His successor, Polyvanov, was able to turn things around and achieve victories for the Russian army. The defeat of Turkey and the loss of territory contributed to the timing of the February Revolution. During the First World War, there was a severe shortage of military equipment in the Russian army. Sukomlinov, the Minister of War, was blamed for this and was eventually dismissed from his position. An investigation into Sukomlinov's activities revealed information about Lt. Col. Myasoitov, who was quickly executed and dismissed from military service. Sukomlinov was then handed over to the State Duma where he faced trial and was ultimately convicted for the army's unpreparedness for war. He was sentenced to indefinite hard labor and had his rights stripped. Sukomlinov served his sentence in various prisons before being released by the Bolsheviks in 1918. He then moved to Finland and later Germany, where he worked as a consultant for the German general staff. He wrote a memoir and a book about Grand Duke Nikolai Nikolaevich, and passed away in Berlin in 1926.